hello everyone and welcome to the latest uh, Power Up series session. Uh, my name is Tom, I'm one of the account directors here at MGM Power and it um, gives me great honour to kind of introduce the latest session here, which is five ways to end your 2022 marketing strategy on a high note. Yeah, nice to see you all here. We're going to allow a few minutes for people to get in and start joining our webinar. So let me introduce myself. I'm Helen. I'm the marketing manager at Imaging Power. Very nice to, to be here and very exciting to be here talking about such a good topic for the end of the year, right? Five ways to end your 2022 marketing strategy on a high note. So, and I am even more excited to welcome our guests for this Power Up Series sessions. Elvira Serra, who is here, I'm sorry for the accent. Don't worry. <laughs> Brazilian. It'd be worse for yeah. now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Elvira Serra, it's the general manager for Biotherm and Elena Rubinstein in Europe. So welcome Elvira to our webinar and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you to you for this amazing opportunity. Amazing, thank you so much. So I think we can kick off. We see some faces here coming up already. So I think we can we can kick off, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so let's do it. So I think before we're gonna talk here about the end of the year marketing strategies, how brands can uh, make the most of it. So, but before we jump into it, we'd like to reflect a little bit about why brands should revisit the marketing strategies heading into the Q4. We know that this time of the year is a super important period period for brands because they're looking into their end of the year goals and of course trying to accomplish the business goals in general and at the same time it's a very competitive time so the key thing here is how you can review how brands can revisit these marketing strategies focusing on these end of the year goals and focusing on uh, making these connections with consumers in such a competitive time and that's what we're going to talk a little bit about now right Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I think when we're looking at kind of sort of some of the kind of strategies you kind of have earlier on in the year, obviously you set the budget at the start of the year, you set the expectations, but in such a fast moving industry as we're all in, it's, it's very easy to kind of sort of continue down that road. But I think the most important thing is to constantly be looking at what's going on in the industry, what's going on in your specific categories as well, and to fully kind of understand how you can kind of take on board what's happening in the kind of industry so far, take a step back and kind of, how can you look at your kind of marketing plan heading into Q4 in a much more kind of holistic way, but also not kind of fall into the pitfalls of any kind of setbacks or kind of roadblocks as you kind of head into what can essentially be a very competitive time, very heavy time. A lot of brands in your kind of category will also be promoting. So it's, it's worth giving it the kind of the thought that it deserves, but also responding, you know, I don't know about you, but six months feels like a long time in this particular industry yeah. and six weeks can even feel like a long time. So really kind of having a finger on the pulse of what's happening both in the industry, but also what's happening outside the industry to really understand how your audience is behaving and how you can kind of tackle Q4. Cause you know, Q4 last year, you know, we were kind of looking at kind of still pandemic. And now obviously we're looking at a different set of challenges each year. So it's about making sure that we can have the plan in place to, to kind of be adaptable and can be flexible in that. Definitely. So if you would like, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, what are the main reasons you see why brands should revisit their marketing strategies at this point of the year that is kind of critical for, for the business goals in general? Okay, let's say, uh, first of all, is it context? I think we are all facing, and not only in uh, my industry, the beauty industry, in all the industries is the inflation. Uh, how the prices are increasing and uh, what is going to be the main drivers uh, of, uh, of the end consumers if they have the same uh, amount or even less to spend uh, in Q4. And uh, as well, I think in every industry where they need to challenge is what has happened during COVID, how the consumer has changed their behavior and then to review it. Why I'm saying that? Because, uh, for example, uh, we were expecting like a uh, e-commerce uh, flying this year, and we have seen that uh, with this, let's say, back to normal, uh, the people are enjoying going back uh, to the point of sale. 
and uh, e-commerce is not going as fast as we expected, and the people are going back to 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 the point of sale just to to enjoy and to to have an experience. And what is the experience that any brand can bring to to the end consumer? This is the first thing. The second thing is, uh, I think this year is is, is, is is going to be key uh, Black Friday because uh, we are all very afraid this morning, just it's an anecdote. I was asking like uh, when my heating system, because I have a central one in my building, is going to, they're going to turn on and they say, you know, due to this crisis. And I was, oh my God, this is affecting all of us. Yeah. And the people at the end of the day, um, they are going to planify even more their purchases and they are going to, to, to try to, 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 to buy even more, I think, during, uh, during Black Friday. And um, what we are starting to see is um, the people are buying less and they are looking more for, for value for money or uh, because their budget is, they have less budget or they are going to, they say like, I, I want to buy less, but better. And then you have these two behaviors, okay? The people that are looking for the discounts or the good offers, and the people that they say, okay, if I have this amount of money, instead to buy three pair of shoes or two creams or whatever, they say, I, I prefer to buy a good one uh, that uh, is going to it is going to be better for me because I'm going to use it one year, two years, whatever. It's a cream. It's, I'm going to see the results. Uh, no, even I faster i think that's really important actually because obviously you know cost of living inflation all of those kind mm -hmm. of pressures are putting you know even greater pressure on people to kind of make those decisions and to i suppose take take more time and consideration over how they spend their money what they spend their money on so i think it's even more important that marketers are really kind of savvy to that but also on kind of you know are really kind of astute to that so you know, finding the right audience, finding the right way to, to tackle that. And also, yeah, as people are being more careful, it's about kind of targeting people with that kind of right message. And I think mm. it's a totally valid concern. It's something we're seeing amongst kind of current clients and yeah. something we're looking to navigate. And I think it's precisely why this part of the presentation is in, right? Because, you know, maybe even six months ago, it might not have been as big a consideration as it is now as to exactly just how big those pressures are going to be heading into Q4 and obviously um, moving forward as well. So, yeah, I think it's something that we can kind of look to navigate and certainly something that we have a number of kind of ways that we can kind of go about that as well. Yeah, yeah, to consider especially what you mentioned, LV, about the new priorities, right? Uh, we have seen that the consumers, they do have new priorities now. So how can brands uh, take this into account when developing these strategies to, to, to boost the end of the year uh, goals, definitely. Um, so yeah, I think this this heads us to uh, our next slide when we're going to talk about we're talking about challenges already, but we have pinpointed some of the absolutely. Challenges. I think you know we've hit the nail on the head early doors anyway in terms of the challenges that people are facing, but there's also obviously the challenges that that then leads kind of marketers, brands, agencies, everyone involved in the space mm. have within those kind of spaces, and obviously the kind of first one is that you know, there's a high volume around this time, right? So you mentioned Black Friday before, that is possibly the highest of high volumes, right? Because obviously yeah. people's behaviors are very kind of, we'll look to that and we'll look to kind of the deals that they can get around that time. So brands will obviously be conscious of going, well, we've got this deal, we've got this way of doing things, we've kind of got this value add that we can bring to consumers. But for us as agencies and brands and, you know, partners as well, how can we kind of tackle through that? And I think in terms of, looking at that period of time and the time afterwards obviously the festive period is very much looking at there's obviously going to be this high volume and potential saturation in that in that sort of time so i mean everyone's using you know sort of on average kind of eight different media platforms as well as to how to get that message out there so it's important to drive frequency it's important to drive the quality of message and the quantity of message as well to kind of to get your point across but I think, you know, it can be very expensive. And I think that is one of the huge challenges around this kind of uh, time. But also, you're not the only one doing it, right? So within any category, everyone's looking to kind of get to the same audience or similar audiences. So it's definitely a huge challenge as well. 
yeah it is and i think along with that uh and it'll be feel free to 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 jump in if you have any insights about that but i do no i i, I jump into the, the the budget limitation because uh, i think it, oh no we are very afraid to, to increase prices but uh, we are seeing that uh, even to produce problems it's, it's more expensive for everyone huh? and uh the uh the um, in general, the, 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 the companies are very afraid to, to increase prices. And I always put the example of Chanel, you know, like uh, in every single crisis, they have doubled the prices of their bags. And um, for me, it's a, a kind of uh, uh, what's first, you know, the chicken or the egg. I think uh, as a brand, uh, uh, if you are the first one uh, moving and increasing the prices, you are setting up you know the the, the, the level and uh, second uh, that is going to help you to to reject more means in your marketing plan this is uh, the the first thing and uh, some you know brands are very afraid like uh, how i'm going to increase the prices this is the first thing uh the second thing uh, and uh, it's a lot about communication because it's now more more than ever about consideration is how I'm going to just move all consumers, they know my brand, they like my brand, to consideration, to, to, to conversion is, okay, is my unique selling proposition clear enough? Is uh, different enough? What is the, 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 the purpose I can bring to the end consumer or the, the reason why to believe in my brand and buy my brand and not another one? This is the, 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 one of the first things that uh, pops up on my mind. The second one, uh, I was uh, just uh, preparing this um, talk. Uh, yes. And uh, uh, I always said to the, 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 the teens, and we don't have the, this habit, you know, like every single time to uh, review all our plans and double checking uh, what are the drivers of the consumer nowadays? They have changed, yes, no, because what I'm experiencing in my side is every three, three months is changing a lot. Yeah. Like one year and a half ago was like all about TikTok. We should go all to TikTok. And now we have metaverse and we are like, mm. you know <laughs> what I mean? Then I think for a market here is uh, key to be constantly in touch with the consumer, constantly challenging the status quo. Okay. Uh, then the third point for me is a seek of information. Like since all of us, huh? I mean, myself in, uh, on, on, on this, uh, uh, the people, since they don't have that much budget or they have less budget, or even if they have the same, all the products they have uh, or services, they have increased uh, their prices due to the, the situation, the people are going to look into more uh, information about uh, is it worth it? Yes, no, I can find something similar. Uh, but cheaper, I can find something at the same price, but better. You know, these kind of things. And uh, uh, this is a, a role to play. And uh, I think this conversion phase is, is going to be key in the, in the battle of uh, the uh, Q4. And uh, search as well. Uh, we don't talk that much, but uh, how we are going to help the consumers to find our products. For example, if I want to, to buy a vacuum cleaner, <laughs> yeah. what is the first one I'm going to, to see? And then when I see it, it's like, okay, if this is the one I need to buy. I don't know. You know what I mean? The people are seeking about the information and not only about the products of 20 euros. Uh, sorry, not only about the products of 200 euros, 200 pounds, uh, as, as well as uh, a serum of 20 euros. The people are, are, are doing their comparisons and they are checking what is the best. Uh, what else? Um, I think uh, uh, in that sense, uh, when we look into our business models and uh, media and uh, investment on influencers, I think the influencers, they have a, a role to play because um, at the end of the day, uh, uh, we are seeing that more and more the, the people are engaging uh, with them yeah. more uh, than the, the traditional media. And uh, we need to differentiate uh, our influences between the ones that are going to really work on, on uh, conversion, uh, social commerce, and the, the ones that are like uh, going to go fully transactional, 
you know, uh, explaining the, the best of, uh, whether you can find the, um, uh, the, the, the better, pr the, the best prices, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, what I call it, and it's the, the opposite in the pyramid of influences, the, 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 the tribes, because those ones are the ones that are like uh, to stay longer. And at the ones they are like activating our end consumer, connected, connecting to the end consumer through an interest instead to directly to a product. Absolutely. For example, and I'm, I'm always putting the example of Rolex. Rolex, uh, they, are, they are not having an influence uh, talking about Rolex because it's the best uh, watch. Uh, um, Rolex, what they do is they think, okay, what is the, the interest or, or, of our, my end consumer, the end consumer I want to reach? This kind of consumer is a consumer that travels a lot. Then what I'm going to do is uh, to take uh, or to work with uh, people that uh, they have a, a, a account uh, talking about travels, and then I'm going to position my product. Okay. Oh, for example, the other day I was. Uh, seen an influencer, a foodie one, you know, and uh, he was uh, explaining a recipe with Italian products uh, that you can buy in a specific Italian shop uh, here in Paris. And I said, it's, 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 it's smart, you know, we don't have that much time. Uh, you have a very yeah. nice and easy recipe and I'm interested and then, okay, I, buy, I can buy it here. You know what I mean? Instead yeah. to just push the product and then come to buy it. I think I think it's really important points, and I know that we've uh, we certainly agree here with the kind of the power that influencer marketing can bring. But I think everything you're kind of talking about there is very much kind of you know really kind of bringing into context for people that it's not just pushing products. It's about how they you know I think you kind of mentioned something really nice around um, what is the purpose of of your message to them because like you say they're gonna they're gonna start searching. Um, all over the place to kind of see, okay, this is a great ad, this is a great product, but what else can I get? Can I get it cheaper? So I think it's about the whole holistic mix and kind of being like, what information are you putting out there? You know, what, how are people talking about your product, whether that be for influencers or whether that be for other channels? And it's like getting that kind of positive word of mouth out there as well about your products, because it's like, what do they see if, you know, from an SEO point of view, or obviously you kind of mentioned TikTok, a lot of people are using TikTok now to search for the latest product so it's like depending on the audience where are people getting that information from so i think it's a fascinating point um that yeah. we all 100 percent and uh yeah it's always good to kind of have different perspectives to talk about these kind of topics it's, yeah um, yeah it's and i think it kind of leads to the to the next slide we're going to talk about like the impact on business goals uh because i do think that one of one of the discussions that we were having internally a lot about the end of the year goals and everything is how these specific periods of the the year is an amazing opportunity for brands to not only promote products and services, but to connect with consumers in a different way and in a more sustainable way. Like this is the this is a good, uh, a perfect time of the year for brands to support consumers on making better decisions, making smarter decisions, like creating campaigns that not only promote the, as you, as you mentioned, not only promote the products and the services, but the values, the principles behind the company and how this company can support the, 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 the consumers and the target audience, not only for the end of the year period, but through how the next year, how, how can we make this investment is smarter, not only for this specific time of the year, but really looking at the future. How can you, how can you start a relationship that is going to last and supporting consumers in the pain point, the key Absolutely. pain points that they have, right? Yeah, and I think, you know, when we talk about sort of things like brand recall and kind of like, how people perceive a brand in total. It's not just about the quality of the products, but it's kind of what they stand for, right? So everything you're kind of saying then, when, an, when a brand's got an authentic way to kind of talk about a certain topic, it's about adopting an, a sort of a viewpoint on that, on that and being able to kind of support people and be conscious of that. So obviously from a brand perspective, you, you're, as you mentioned before, kind of getting those kind of, so I suppose, pressure to kind of, raise prices but it's, it's yeah. about obviously kind of understanding when to do how to do but also to kind of understand what the pressure points are from audiences as well but equally positioning yourselves as as the people who can provide that high quality product to people who need it 
um, in the right way to the right audience as well. So yeah, sure. And I believe from a brand perspective, this must be a challenge, right, Elvira, uh, to to promote values and promote services and to support consumers in the in the right timing, right? It's especially because it's quite uh, crowded and uh, AQ4 is quite, uh, let's say, it's a, uh, like high volume uh, period. Okay. And uh, we, it's not only if I'm thinking about beauty, for me, my main competitors are all the beauty brands, but not only if we think about uh, to buy a gift for Christmas, it's like uh, you have all the industries, they are offering gifts. And um, I think. Um, is your ability, 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 uh, avail no, ability, sorry. <laughs> it's a brand to really connect in, uh, with a sense of purpose to the end consumer. Uh, is your ab uh, ability to uh, connect directly to, 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 the, to your audience? And um, I think back in the days, it was like uh, more direct, you know, with TV, with press, but now it's quite atomized. And uh, I think in a certain way, the brands, they need to take some bets and uh, to really understand uh, what are the main tensions of their own consumers. For example, if, uh, if I'm a consumer and I want to, I'm going to put you an example of yoga, because I think that the yoga brands, they, they, they do amazing things uh, online. You know, in, instead to promote like uh, uh, some leggings or clothes to go to the yoga class, you know, they, they do partnerships with uh, yoga teachers. Uh, they, uh, they have some kind of service like uh, yoga uh, online classes that you can uh, rent. And uh, is how you, through the tension of, I'm practicing yoga, I need to have like the good leggings to do so. You ended up saying, okay, maybe I, I, I should buy a pair of leggings of this brand which is very expensive, but since I'm seeing all these people, they can do it. I'm going, I'm going to, 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 to spend 100 or 150 uh, euros on it. Yeah. And uh, is this how you can, through an, an main interest, think about what is the main tension of the end consumer when they are buying this product? Okay. And then to say, okay, if the tension is, okay, when I'm practicing joke, I need something very comfortable and that allow me to practice in the right way and they're really to focus on my practice that they are willing to pay even more because you run through them you know in this uh, like uh, in in my industry we call it beauty tension another example is um, some brands like mine they are focused on people uh, they are uh, um, like very engaged with uh, ocean uh, Courses, okay, and, and those people, uh, they have a lot of followers, they're around, um, let's say, uh, water sports, uh, like uh, skippers, like a uh, surfer, uh, like uh, uh, I'm just thinking wake, etc., etc. And at the end of the day, if you think about, okay, like what is the relationship between those sports and the beauty? But all those people, they have as well a beauty tension because they spend a lot of time under the water. Uh, the skin is very dry, uh, they spend a lot of time uh, with, um, exposed to the sun, and at the end of the day, like us, they, they need beauty product. It's how you as a brand think about what is the main center of interest of your brand, what is that, that, that can in a certain way match with a tribe, you know, and then how you, through this tribe, try to understand what is the tension related to your product, Rolex, for example. What is the tension of people that are traveling a lot? Is it tight? Yeah, I was, yeah, I think it's a really important point. And I think coming back to where we kind of were before, there's obviously a lot of competition, competition in all markets, right? And it's, if it's those individual instances where it's kind of like sports stars who kind of have that kind of wear and tear on their skin and that kind of time and, you know, they're on the go and things like that. I think it's, it's about establishing those kind of moments especially at this time of year and I suppose contextualizing it for this time of year as well and I think you know it's something that we think a lot about with our brands and, and something that you know really kind of putting ourselves in people's shoes and understanding their kind of points of tension right the thing that is going to get them to kind of understand that 
this brand in particular will kind of help them in in the ways that they need rather than purely just it's going to help generally it's kind of really drilling down into those real insights about people's lives and and you know if you're busy you know you know we work with brands obviously around kind of lifestyle and kind of how to fit into those yeah. lifestyles as well not just around obviously kind of here's our product it's great because of x y and z and in it's increasingly that's more and more important and and another point is uh, just take your words it's about uh, how relevant you are for the consumer yeah. at this moment Absolutely. okay uh is uh, how you make uh, or how you working to your, with your teams to be agile enough to consider the context. For example, it's like uh, the, uh, during the winter, the, 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 the cold weather makes your, your skin very dry and uh, itchy. And then uh, how you can, uh, through this uh, like tension, uh, connect or to have a connection with the end consumer. Uh, I'm just trying to, to think about another example is, uh, For example, the um, the, the uh, air companies, you know, like uh, all the stress uh, you have when you go to the airports, uh, et cetera, et cetera, when they want to push you the fast track, they don't push you the fast track. They push you the experience and the, the fact that uh, uh, your travels, your travels or travel with your family can be uh, joyful <laughs> as well if you buy the fast track <laughs> and you don't need to spend that much time in the security uh, point of uh, the airport. I'm always very jealous It's, of uh, how you track, manage, that's uh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but, it, but, but it's true. It's at the end, is how you can bring it and you can be consistent and with a, a USB that is meaningful for the general consumer. And for that, you need to know very well your consumer. How you can be how you can answer the needs uh, of, of this consumer. And sometimes it's to, just to think about what is the intention. Uh, and the intention it doesn't mean uh, it could be like, for example, in yoga, is, uh, you need to uh, be dressed in, in a very comfy way. Uh, when it comes to, to uh, beauty products, is uh, how can I protect my skin when it's sport? Uh, and then, uh, mm, I just lost. <laughs> yeah. no, What no I right. I'm, I'm sure we've got, we can, we can talk about that all day as well. I'm, I'm absolutely sure of it. Um, yeah, yeah, I think uh, the next the next slide, Elvira, I think we, we would love to have your perspective about these stats, especially because you've started this conversation talking about how uh, the consumer was super into e-commerce and online shopping and that now you are you have this perspective that we the consumer is more keen to have these in-person experiences so we got this stats from adobe analytics report this year that the global online holiday spending is expected to hit 900 billion dollars this season and So my question for you is, do you think that brands, because we can see from these stats, and I would love to have your perspective on that, brands are really willing to keep investing online because of this uh, shift in the consumer behavior that we have seen after the pandemic. But can we offer these experiences, can brands offer these experiences online these, the, as, as powerful as they can the, with the in-person Uh, perspective. What do you think about that? The thing is, like, um, we need to think differently in the sense that uh, you need to think about all the consumer path. Okay. And um, back in the days, I was working for a professional product uh, brand. And, and uh, uh, what I was explaining to my teams is, guys, Because the customer path has changed. It's not anymore only the salon that you, entered, that you were entering the salon and then you were buying, you were having a service and then buying your products and then going home. Now, the customer path starts at home or it starts in, in the middle of the street when you see an influencer with um, um, amazing hair. Okay, and then ends when you go home and you, you have doubts how to use the products. Okay, then for me, this is the same. It's like, The fact that the people are going back faster to, to the, the physical stores and uh, they are not buying 
uh, or, or the, the online sales, they are not growing as fast as thought. It doesn't mean that the people are not seeking for experiences. And when this is a paradox, is how as a brand you can work in all the customer funnel to make the experience from the A to Z meaningful and different because as a consumer, I'm not, I'm, I'm not expecting to have the same uh, customer experience when I go to the physical store than when, when I go online. Right. Okay, yeah. I, I, for example, when I go to a physical store, uh, why I'm going? Because I want to try the jacket or I want to try the fragrance or the, the skincare product. And uh, I want to have like maybe a face-to-face -face, uh, advice with uh, um, someone that can explain me the product. When I go online, is uh, uh, maybe I can do my own diagnosis online and maybe I want to compare different brands. Or, you know what I mean? It's like, first of all, we need to understand uh, why yeah. the yeah. consumers are going to the store rather than online. Or if they go online, why they don't buy online? And what they're expecting when they, they, they go to buy uh, at, at the shop. And uh, nevertheless, uh, what we see is that 80% of the consumers, they buy offline. They are looking for information before and after, you know, online. And then online for me as well is a place to find uh, information about the products, to make comparisons, to try to find what is the best offer in terms of prices, but as well in terms of quality. And uh, that's why e-commerce e e e has a role to play. And uh, even if the, 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 the sales are not growing as fast as we, th as we thought last year, they are growing at two digits uh, growth. Huh? Uh, but uh, we were thinking that the <laughs> physical store were a little bit over and, and it's not true. It's, it's in, it is a really interesting question because I think Obviously, just establishing because different brands, different industries, there will be that different path to purchase. Because I mean, you kind of alluded to it there that there's still a role for e-commerce to play, but ultimately, people are kind of reverting to that kind of being able to see it, feel it, touch it, and even if they don't buy it, then maybe it's it's, it's establishing that kind of behaviour. Because we obviously, we, when we're running kind of campaign, when we're running campaigns here, it's very much that the frequency is getting higher as well. So people need to see something. On, on in the digital space more so before they buy it. So it only makes sense that people are in these exceptional circumstances going more to kind of those physical experiences. So it's, it's really about how brands, marketers, all of us uh, sort of here can really kind of find out what, how that consumer path to purchase is really kind of changing and totally hear you. I think a lot of, a lot of budget as, as this kind of uh, sort of quote suggests is being put into online, but I think there's still huge role for that to play but it's good to just kind of always be you know checking in and kind of like understanding how that kind of consumer behavior has changed and is continuing to change and i think you know we're saying and about you that. know talking yeah. about holidays and travels uh, i think is one of the industries they are they are going to be more like um, in this path of uh, like uh, value for money and uh, it's where all bank is huge okay and uh you are going to have more and more people they are going to go into, okay, I don't care to pay more, but I want to have this experience and they're going to go to the uh, exclusive travel agency to really find this experience that no one can provide them. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like uh, this kind of, okay, if you go to whatever, Himalaya, there is a specific uh, path uh, to go <laughs> up, but then no one can go, but we know it and we can we can uh, offer to you you know it's like uh, i think the consumers the consumers what i'm seeing is they're going to go like uh, into the really into brands like the cheapest one because their budget is they have less budget or they have the same budget but the prices have, have increased or you're going to have the opposite the people they, they, they are going to say, okay, I'm not going to be, and I don't want to be like the others. Or if I buy one thing, if I have this budget, I prefer to buy one good thing, you know, uh, like a premium one or to, to buy a premium experience rather than to, to organize a trip that everyone is organizing or to go to a trip that uh, I can find uh, 500 tourists yeah. like me. 
in the same <laughs> from, uh, like all city. of us trying to that get away true. over the over the Christmas period for sure. No, a hundred percent. I think you know it's it's kind of understanding that people are looking for those special experiences, and when they are spending more, it's, it's about kind of for every different budget, right? It's kind of different people will have different budget points around this time of year, and just looking for more for their money, whether you have a higher budget or a lower budget. I think that's that's definitely kind of a good point, and I think. On the subject of kind of different business goals as well, we're kind of obviously looking at kind of how that can kind of work for different businesses and different strategies. Yeah, definitely. And I think one of the points here that we've been talking a lot uh, about is the this personalization aspect that you've mentioned earlier. And I mm. think this, it's it's it, from from our uh, conversations internally and from our learnings with the campaigns, what we have seen is how important for brands to revisit the target audience in these specific periods of the of the year, because most of the times the strategies have been planned a long time ago, and some marketeers they just assume that the target audience remains the same and don't consider the changes, the 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 new context as you mentioned. How how has this in has this this talent or this target audience evolved? What are their new preferences? What they don't like? What they like? How what do they expect from the brand? And most of the times, uh, the target audience uh, comes to us as a like predefined thing that doesn't change. So mm. we believe that this is one of the key aspects on how how marketing can how brands can really make marketing work for the business goals. One of the key learnings that we have internally is. Don't just consider your target audience as something that uh, is immutable and, and doesn't change at all. Because probably, as we were talking about, like six months today is already a long time. So probably mm. the strategy that you had planned in the beginning of the year or in the middle of the year, your target audience probably changed, right? Yeah, and I think, I think just to kind of continue from that point is, yeah, just use the learnings and from a more technical standpoint, right? So what channels are working, what audiences are working, what has been yeah. working for you and, and really kind of taking that kind of like, it has your tone of voice changed. Is the tone of voice you planned at the start of the year still relevant now? Because obviously if you're selling something a little bit more aspirational is that, does that need to be changed? That all the stuff you were saying as well around kind of even people with a higher budget say, would would then be looking at one special thing rather than multiple special things are people going to be as kind of i suppose you know giving as many gifts or you know are they going to be doing the kind of festive period in the same kind of way and i think to so all of the conversation we've had and i think so far has been fantastic and around kind of yes people will be making purchases people will still want to do things yeah. and, and be in that space but it's, it's so much more important to really kind of like refine that message down to kind of go well we we understand that it is more of a pressing time it is more of a frugal time and people will take longer to make those decisions so then it's more around how can those messages adapt and you know how things have kind of changed over that time is even more important than it's ever been to kind of get that right definitely definitely yeah, you, you, you spot on uh, one of my favorite topics is the christmas gifts I think they're going to see two effects. Like uh, some families that people are going to keep uh, buying uh, one uh, gift for everyone. And maybe it's going to be with a smaller budget. Okay. And uh, we are going to see that the, there's families that say, okay, instead to do five small uh, gifts, what we are going to do is like uh, we do one gift to one person and Surprise, you know, like Secret Santa is called in English, yeah, Secret Santa. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and then the, what, the, the, <laughs> what they're going to do is to, to, to buy a better gift or a more expensive gift, but only one. Yeah. And this kind of, you know, uh, I think a mentality or, or reflect that the marketers they need to have. It's like, a, I always push my teams in Europe, like, it's, 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 it's good we, we anticipate, it's good we planify, but please, one month, one, two months before, we check if what you have planned is it still relevant or not. Definitely. Because we are seeing that the, 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 the main drivers in different categories, they are changing like every six months. And then what was meaningful for the end consumer yeah, like six months at the beginning of the year, right now, they don't care. And now you're out of, uh, out of the game. Yeah. 
So. Sure, absolutely. I think, uh, well, we're talking about Christmas, right? So we just wanted to to discuss this specific campaign that we have done because we feel like it's a good example. Yeah. Conscious of timing here uh, for the audience. So we're just going to go through it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll kind of take you take through it quickly. Yeah, I, I mean, all the, all the talk about kind of behaviors and, you know, how people are around the kind of festive period um, was no truer than when we worked with Bumble, right? So, and dating in December. So it's, it's often quite a um, uh, sort of frightening prospect for some. People get dating fatigue, people kind of um, drop off perhaps or start to get ready to kind of get in your comfy clothes and sit in and, and hide away from the cold. And I think people obviously had that behavior and it was, it was kind of for us um, along with Bumble to kind of really understand that behavior and, and you know, just kind of take that kind of pressure away because I suppose a lot of people feel pressure around that kind of season to find someone or to not be alone or, to, or that they feel lonely. So it's, it's not even around a kind of sales message, but more around yeah. how people feel whilst they're dating. And, and what we essentially did as this kind of content snapshot kind of alludes to is essentially kind of find the right kind of influencers who could really bring that to life and capture sketches or um, sort of funny situations to kind of really lighten the mood around that time of year, because it can be very, it can be very tough uh, on people and that's something that was was really kind of clear so I think it's it's not just around kind of people's budgets and people's buying and selling but also around use of the app so very much kind of within this kind of time period which is again typically quite a sort of competitive landscape anyway as we've kind of discussed um, we actually saw a 66% um, increase on our usual kind of engagement because it was just really kind of inspiring content, funny content, it really kind of struck a chord with people as well. So it was a really good way of actually reading the room, right? People didn't want us to sort of say, you know, here's all the amazing features. It's more like we understand you as a brand, um, as a proposition, and we're here for you, whether you want to stay, whether you don't want to stay, we're the brand to kind of help you essentially sort of date how you want to in December. So. Yeah, just a kind of a nice one. And yeah. uh, talking of December and Christmas, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all it's getting the kind of Christmas juices flowing. Sure. Yeah, I think this is a great example of what we were discussing uh, on how brands can can offer more than the the offers, the sales offers, the Christmas offers, and the products and the services. I think this campaign kind of uh, translates this idea of how brands can be uh, can support. Uh, the the audiences in this specific moment. So, Elvira, I know that you have mentioned uh, quite a few examples now, but I don't know if you if you have any any great case study that you'd like to mention in regards to Christmas and December specifically. Yeah, ooh. <laughs> it's a very crowdy one, uh, and I think uh, I'm just trying to think something uh, not in my industry because. Um, I think it's, 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 it's very crowdy, but this example of Bumble is very good in the sense like uh, they are, they, yeah. the catch up phrase is around the, 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 the tension of some people. They are going to feel alone uh, during December. Yes. And a way to like uh, cover this gap is like, okay, I offer you Bumble. Uh, I'm just trying to think about um, people during Christmas, they have been. Uh, meaningful uh, that is not in beauty because beauty is very promotional no? being honest and this this might be a, a, a as we mentioned a great challenge right how to how to work with uh, with beauty the beauty in this time of the year and also making this I think deeper connection with the audience like trying to open this conversation about something else in that is not the mm -hmm. Self, right you need to give them a reason to believe or for example some brands uh, what they are doing is some um, highlighting their causes okay the the ngos they are partnering uh, and uh, their all their sustainability actions uh, kind of okay buying our products uh, is uh, through the through you, we can also uh, help the oceans, or we can also help the, um, this uh, NGO, or this uh, uh, cause, um, to see in the beauty industry more and more the brands, they are claiming, or they are, they are in a certain way leveraging in this kind of uh, marketing actions 
to give uh, the end consumer a reason to believe and as well to show to the society they have a role to play. It's not only a commercial role, but it's as well a, a society sustainability uh, role uh, that can be meaningful for the, for the end consumer. Because if you see a brand that, for example, they have a, a cause uh, helping uh, victims of harassment, you know, in the streets, and then uh, another one, uh, they are only selling the product, or maybe I would think uh, as a mother of two daughters, okay, uh, maybe I'm going to buy this one because at the, at the end of the day, I'm supporting a brand cause that is supporting the society to be better. Uh, this is the first thing that the uh, Pops in my mind. Uh, I'm just trying to think a bit about the uh, other uh, campaigns. Um, yeah, I think this is this is a, a great example of this this idea that we're we're talking about here uh, of how brands can can go beyond just the product offer, right? And yeah. I, I think this is the the key the key message here, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Uh, just I think we're moving on to the our finally our five major tips uh for brands here to end the year on a high note we're gonna go quickly through yeah. then um yeah absolutely and, um yeah. so from <laughs> one to five right so obviously it's important to kind of set benchmarks so it's, it's ultimately something that talks about you know what does success look like from a brand perspective from an agency perspective from anyone out there kind of doing their thing so i think the most important thing is obviously what does success look like how do we define that from, from what we're looking, are we looking for growth? Are we looking for sales? Are we looking for downloads? Are we looking to kind of create that kind of brand uplift? Are we looking to push, you know, our message around a certain cause and to, in, in a kind of authentic and way that kind of resonates with audiences? All of which we've had some great discussions on, but there's multiple different ways that around this yeah. kind of time, we can kind of be active as a brand or as an agency as well. And, and I think one of the best tips around that is to obviously kind of, take on board everything you've done in the year, but also to kind of look at best practice, right? So what are, you know, competitors doing well? What are the, you know, category at large doing well? But also, you know, we do this a lot as well, is, is really kind of take a deep dive into not just the category itself, but actually channel specific, industry specific, influence marketing page, studio, like all of these different like aspects, like what content is performing best? What trends are we seeing? So. Is, is a mixture of kind of planned and more spontaneous and trend-led content, but also kind of like understanding what role that has to play. Is that relevant for you? And ultimately, who's doing it well, how we can make that personalized to our own approach and how can we do things in our own way? So all of those kind of things lead up to just being able to kind of set that, um, set those benchmarks from the very beginning of Q4. Yeah, yeah. And I think the other tip that we have uh, selected here is, of course, experiential marketing. We've talked a little bit about it here, about the whole online, in-person and hybrid experience and how brands can actually offer these to consumers and to, to develop these deeper relationships with the consumers, not only for the product and the service, but also for the experience, offering experiences that relate to this consumer and connect with the, the current moment that they're living. Yeah, and I think all of those kind of things, it, it leads itself to kind of establishing some clear momentum, right? So, yeah. you know, if you're a brand that doesn't have momentum until this time of year, then there's obviously an opportunity to kind of create something that, again, to all of the points we're making before, I think is, is massively informed this in, in the sense of, well, how can you now relevant in a, in a kind of more relevant way in Q4 target and build that momentum get people talking about the brand, get people understanding what it is, if it's if it's a new brand or if it's an existing brand to kind of re-energize whatever core audience you have, or even indeed find new audiences, understand their behavior, create momentum in the sense that to, to, to all the points we've kind of been making in that, people will do more research, people will understand, but then if they see lots of, you know, excitement or buzz around a particular product or service, then it starts to create momentum and it starts to make your job a lot easier. So finding ways to really kind of cut through the noise at this kind of time of year and, and kind of establish your own momentum as well. Yeah, to stand out among the crowd. And finally, this is a good back-to-back uh, -back here we're doing. So <laughs> the fourth tip that we have selected is, of course, we could not leave this out of the, the list is influencer marketing. We've talked about the power of the influencers. 
on connecting uh, brands with their audiences through trust, authenticity, brand, the, the influencers, they know how to communicate with audiences. They have, uh, they have the power of community building. That is something that the, the, the brands are really looking after. So influencers, they do have these communities super, super established. And of course, what we have seen in the past years is the industry growing uh, significantly, so which shows that influencer marketing is not going anywhere, but it's transforming, it's shifting. Now we can see that influencers are much more connected to communities and that influencer marketing can be much more integrated to other marketing strategies, to other marketing touch points, being part of major marketing strategies. This is something that we have been seeing in our campaigns as well. Yeah, and then I suppose the final point, we mentioned it a, a load of times, but of course, of course, doing all of this and, and being kind of as effective as possible means being effective with the budget you're putting out there. And we talk about the big figures, but ultimately we work with a variety of brands, some big, some small, but I think wh whoever the brand and however you, you kind of work, I think the most important thing is to really be clear with those benchmarks, kind of really bring those experiences to life generate that momentum and through whatever channels going to make sense, including influence marketing. But all of that is underpinned by a budget that is really, really optimized, is really kind of, and we, we often here obviously kind of want to make the most of our clients' budgets. And that's essentially, you know, testing and learning content. How, how can we learn what the best approach is? How can we take um, those positive steps to kind of promote something or bring something to market, but equally do it in a responsible way so that we are really kind of delivering the best possible value. And, and ultimately it's the, there's some amazing things you can do um, in, in this kind of industry. So um, yeah, I think just kind of acting in that kind of way and being really kind of responsible around this time of year because of all, all the competition, all the, all the saturation that can potentially be there and finding your way to kind of cut through. Yeah. So Elvira, we would love, I'm going to combine two questions because we would love to know which tips you would add to this list, but also what do you expect from the next year? So uh, what are your, your tips, not only for the holiday season now, but what, how do you see the next year coming? What are the trends that you see coming? I think uh, we're missing only and it's very linked with uh, the five points uh, you have considered is uh, the local relevancy. Uh, because sometimes uh, we forget uh, at the end of the day, uh, we are human beings and uh, as much as you can connect with your end consumer, uh, you know, and uh, this local touch uh, can be a cultural thing, can be, uh, I don't know, uh, sometimes we, the big companies we, we forget. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what uh, to expect from 2023? I think uh, it's a very good question because, uh, wow, uh, we're starting the year with, um, let's say, a uh, province of uh, like missing um, raw materials. <laughs> we are ending up the year with uh, a huge inflation. Yeah. Uh, I hope that 2023 is going to be a year that uh, all the puzzle is going to start uh, after three years, let's say two years of pandemic and one year of uh, adjustment is going to start to like um, work. And uh, let's say that the new playground uh, when it comes to influencer marketing, when it comes to social media as well, because social media has, been, like, has changed so much with all metaverse, uh, NFT with uh, um, Instagram, I remember like uh, in 2014, like uh, no, 2014, like eight years ago, they, they went to with the uh, advertising and now it's, uh, uh, it's very common. But uh, if we think about uh, the major change in the, in the digital industry, uh, like uh, most of them that, that happened in this last three years, TikTok, you know, and um, this is a, another thing, and, and I hope that uh, uh, from my from our, my perspective as a marketeer is um, that we are going to start to see like uh, uh, how the, the business model uh, are going to be like uh, let's say uh, more stable mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, 
let's say that we are going to see more radicalized you know positions that uh, tiktok is going to to be is going to position itself for for what kind of content what kind of audiences uh metaverse for, for another ones and then um, um, instagram uh, you know more image or brand uh, equity builder because uh, that's true that the last three years uh, the market has changed a lot and then the for us as a brand is going to be uh, how we define the role to play or how we define what are going to be our priorities in terms of end consumer audiences and how to tackle them. Because I think these two years has been, or three years has been like a test and learn, test and learn. And uh, next year is going to be, okay, we test and learn during two years. And now we can say, okay, is uh, for this kind of product, for this kind of industry, for this kind of audiences, this is the kind of ma marketing uh, like uh, strategies we need to put in place. Yeah, Absolutely. now it's time to take the learnings, right? And and make them... I hope so. If not, yeah. I'm going to be crazy. <laughs> yeah, test and learn is a very uh, commonly used phrase around here, that's for sure. It is, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Especially after the pandemic, I yeah. think, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so we have reached the, the Q&A phase. Thank you so much for everyone who, who is still with us here watching this very insightful conversation. I think we could be having this conversation like for many hours because it's yes, so many insights and so so many learnings to take, right? So our team has selected a few questions here, but I'm conscious of time. So maybe we'll go just for this one. What do you think? That it's more addressed to Elvira, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. during the holiday season, from your experience, which types of campaigns you see that work best? Are the emotion emotive types of campaigns? Back in the days, yes. <laughs> you know, because the, the people like uh, send of the year, like uh, you are like let's say uh, having more exchanges with your friends, your family, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and it's a moment like okay. Phew, to balance uh, what you have achieved uh, personally, professionally, et cetera, et cetera. But I think this year is going to be a like kind of mix between, okay, emotionally, but as well, like guys, I don't have that much budget to spend. And then uh, the people are going to think twice yeah. uh, before to turn on the heating system. <laughs> I think I think just to add to that from, from my perspective as well, I think, yeah, it's, the, the emotive campaigns, it's always been kind of uh, sort of important to kind of tap into people's emotion, whether that's be to make people laugh, like the bundle campaign, or to kind of really kind of tap into an emotion around kind of whether it be Christmas or whether it be a, a significant gifting time of the year to kind of hold that kind of family moment as an example. But I think you're absolutely right. I think the most important thing, and this is something that both happens outside of Q4 and in Q4 as well, is that it's, it's frequency of message, right? So it's, it's understanding that there is a kind of, I suppose, a down the funnel thinking, right? So knowing who the brand is, knowing what the product is, but also understanding how it's useful for them and kind of taking consumers on the journey, right? So whether that be a fully digital journey or whether that be, you know, on and offline, I think it's the most important thing is that people aren't, people see getting the emotional engagement with your product or brand, but then also see how it is beneficial for for their lives, right? So it's it's kind of really tapping into both sides of the brain, right? It's yeah. kind of it's kind of the emotional side and the you know the kind of more creative side, but also the yeah. right now I need to go. Okay, it's this much money. Do I have that budget? It's like I really like it, but I'll do that. So yeah, from my yeah. side, it's definitely about how we can tap into both of those, and hopefully the tips we've given will kind of help that. But ultimately, it's about kind of testing, seeing what works, and uh, yeah. Yeah, red right. is more like Very emotional beautiful. side, but in a, in a emotional side, but in a rational way. I'm saying emotional side in a rational way. Yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, Amazing. Yeah, a good, a good. Uh, I'm applying to myself that. every day. Yeah. <laughs> we'll send that out with the email. So thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I think we, yeah, unfortunately, we have to wrap up. Elvira, thank you so much for joining us in this conversation. It's been a real right? pleasure, absolutely. Yeah, uh, thank you for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to exchange with you. Yeah, and uh, for everyone who's watching, yes, thank, thank you, you for attending, right? And if you have any questions, 
we are across all the social channels so you can look after imaging power and we're going to be there thank okay. you very much everyone thank you bye-bye yes, bye-bye